Welcome back, and I am very glad to bring back to the program Wendy Mara, Mara Law. Uh, Wendy is in Ormond Beach, Florida. In fact, she's just tr across the street from my office. Wendy, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me again. We're glad to have you back. We've got another estate planning topic to dig into. So real quick, we've got a couple disclaimers for our, our, our viewers. Uh, we're not going to give you legal advice today. And of course, Wendy's uh, background and her legal training is in the state of Florida and Florida law. So if you're watching this program in another state, then of course... That sounds like a, a telephone commercial, right? <laughs> but uh, but you, you need to look at the laws and work with an attorney who is licensed and schooled in the, the state law where they are. Um, other disclaimers, Wendy and I do work together, and so we have a good working relationship, but I always like for people to know if I'm working with a guest that is on the program. So let's, uh, let's dive into another topic that I need your help talking to the viewers about. And within this big broad area of estate planning and people getting their their legal house in order there's an area that's kind of a subset if you will of estate planning and it deals with the area of what's called special needs or supplemental needs and oftentimes people are talking about a trust mm -hmm. so i wanted to have you help me dig into that where the need for a special trust a special needs trust when does somebody need that what are some of the circumstances or conditions that might make that appropriate that that's needed beyond some of the basics? Okay. So now we, we've got a little bit of time, so we can't do a three hour talk on it. Although Wendy and I would love to talk about <laughs> this could. for three hours. So, um, But some basic information yeah. is really important to know. Many times when um, somebody is doing their estate planning and they have um, a relative or somebody that they love, and they want to leave some money to somebody who has special needs, their thought is in their estate planning documents they're going to leave something to that particular person. And it's a wonderful thing that they are thinking of somebody who has special needs. Um, however, that can be counterproductive mm. <laughs> because if, um, and it depends upon the situation of the person who has special needs. Sure. So if you have somebody who is disabled and that person is collecting any type of government aid for their disability, then it's important to know what type of um, government aid is being collected. If it's SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Insurance, um, that is based on um, the work history of that particular person. and. As we work, we get credits, whether it's for retirement at the end of our work mm -hmm. history or if it's we become disabled during the course of our working, um, we are eligible to collect um, the SSDI. Okay. If you are collecting SSDI and somebody were to leave you um, an inheritance, a large chunk um, of money, a large chunk of money, that is not going to hurt you because the SSDI is not. Mm. Um, determined based on your financial need. Okay. It's based on your work credits. And your disability. And your disability. Okay. And that can change. I mean, if you can be disabled and then down the road, for, not for, depending upon yeah. what your disability is, not be. Uh, but it's totally dependent upon your mm. work credits. So if you receive an inheritance, if you have other assets, you can. That's not going to affect the uh, money that you continue to get through the government. Okay. However, if you are on SSI, which is Supplemental Security Insurance, SSI is directly related to your need. Okay. And so if, um, and, and I've seen this in my practice um, come out in ways that um, are unexpected. <laughs> um, so if you, um, for example, if you are um, receiving SSI and you're in the midst of a family law case, a divorce, and you start receiving some alimony, hmm. that's going to affect your SSI. Okay. Um, if you um, receive an equitable distribution that's from the divorce, that's going to affect your SSI. If you are um, going along and you're collecting the SSI and a family relative thinks <laughs> they're helping you and leaving you a chunk of money as an inheritance, thinking that can be used above, uh, over and above your right. SSI, 
um, the um, uh, unfortunate result is that you're assuming the government discovers <laughs> that you've received this inheritance, <laughs> your SSI can be and probably will be taken away. Okay, so the whole idea then with creating a special type of trust, a special mm -hmm. needs trust, is to address this income-based or asset-based qualification for benefits from government or exactly. something else. Exactly. So as um, a recipient of SSI, you are allowed up to $2,000 in an account. That much. That much, exactly. Doesn't sound like it, it's not a whole it's lot. It's not, it's not. Um, however, the thought is, and even if that income was from your SSI and it's just building up, that's, so, that's right. not, but the so whole purpose, exactly, the whole purpose of the SSI is for food and shelter. Mm. And obviously some other thing, but it usually is not very much money. You're mm -hmm. talking sometimes under $800 for $500 a month. Okay. It's not a lot of money. But there are other benefits besides that SSI check your, that the person is getting every month. Maybe they're getting some housing mm -hmm. and some medi Medicaid benefits. I mean, there's other things that they're getting along with that. So if they no longer are qualified for the SSI, that's not the only problem. Mm. It has also, a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect. They're not qualified for the Medicaid. They may be receiving some okay. housing assistance. They're not qualified for that anymore. So the effect can be enormous. So if somebody has a, a special needs beneficiary, they, it doesn't matter of the relative, whatever it is, mm -hmm. they will want to create a special trust, special needs exactly. trust, and have that be where the money goes. So they create that during their lifetime or at their death, and the asset they want that person to get goes into the trust to be held for that person's benefit and then given to them. And the important thing, and you're a trustee, so <laughs> the important sure. thing is that the money cannot be used for food or shelter. So education, medical equipment that they're not getting paid, you know, that the government's not mm -hmm. paying for, vacations, art lessons, music can, lessons, anything. Can, can they that spend money on food on the vacation? That, yes, okay. but to end, you, the money cannot be paid directly to the beneficiary, so their guardian, their parent, okay. somebody who's caring for them, that sort of thing. And there are um, two types of special needs trusts. Mm. There is a first party special needs trust, so if um, an individual has a um, personal injury lawsuit and collects a lump sum settlement. It's their money. That's their money. That's a first person, um, first party special needs trust. Um, it used to be up until December 2016. In Florida. <laughs> not just in Florida, oh, okay. federal. Federal, okay. Um, there was federal change to the law that um, it used to be that the settler, the individual who has a special needs, could not create a first party special for needs themselves. trust for themselves. Okay. Somebody had to do it for them, a guardian, hmm. a parent, or get court order. Be and that was, um, and I think, an oversight. They corrected it in December okay. of 2016. So now the settler can be mm. the person who actually receives the funds. Not all people who have a special needs trust are necessarily um, adjudicated to be um, needing a guardian. So okay. sometimes they have, even though they have a special need, it could have nothing to do with their ability to think and uh, handle their own okay. funds. Okay. Um, so a first party special needs trust is for somebody who receives the money themselves, whether it's from a personal injury lawsuit, any other type of lawsuit is, is oftentimes where that's coming from. It's important that that money be put in that special needs trust created by that person or a guardian or a family member. A third party, well, before I go on to the third party special needs trust, with the first party special needs trust, once the individual who is the beneficiary is deceased, whatever money is remaining needs to go back to the state to pay back the state for any benefits that they have paid so on behalf. Income, insurances, Whatever the medical. state has paid, okay. right. So unless you're talking large sums of money, there's probably not going to be anything left. Okay. Now that's a big difference with the third party special needs trust, which is created by um, an individual on behalf of the person with special needs. And it's usually through, it's an inheritance where somebody's- it's not that person's money. Exactly. So it's either through with. an inheritance right. or somebody can create one if they have money and they want to gift mm. money every year for tax purposes. Make sure that goes into a special needs trust. That's a third party special needs trust. Biggest difference with that is that at once the beneficiary passes away, 
those funds, and it, there should be language in the trust that dictates that, those funds can go to other beneficiaries. Okay. It does not go back to the government because it was never that disabled person's money to begin with. I got you. So they may have received benefits from the state, mm -hmm. but this was never their money. It's really somebody else providing for them to supplement and be for other things like you talked exactly. about to make them more comfortable. Exactly. Mm. And then there, and I think it's also important to talk about pooled special needs trusts, which they have first party and third party also. And a pooled special needs trust is very um, useful for somebody who has some money, but not, a lot. but not a lot. So you don't have to worry about setting up an individual trust and setting up and getting a professional trustee. Mm -hmm. uh, the pooled special needs trust, they take all the money and put it in a pool. Now, there has to be sub-accounts sure. so that be there can be an accounting for each individual person. But it's less expensive, and the trustees are professional trustees, and it's a, it has to be in the state of Florida that that pooled special trust must be um, a nonprofit must run okay. it. Now, if it's a first person, again, the same type of rules. First person, it goes back to the state, but the difference is the nonprofit can actually take some funds out I of see. that and use it for their programs, like there's the public guardianship program, they have a pooled trust. They take some of that money to help with the mm. program itself. Again, the third um, party pooled trust, the same type of idea that there are gonna be fees taken out mm -hmm. at the end, but that can go back to whomever set it up. So with each of these types of, you know, depending on the situation, which is appropriate type of special mm -hmm. needs trust, with each of them though, there are some common elements. There's a need for a trust. There's a need for a document. There's a need for somebody to create it. There's a need for the, a clear identification of beneficiaries or remainder beneficiaries. And also, you mentioned trustee. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Right. Who's going to be in charge of that trust? It, right. It's not going to be that person mm -hmm. that, exactly. for whom the benefits are provided exactly. or the money's for. It needs to be somebody else. Now, sometimes it's a family member. Sometimes it's a professional. My opinion, <laughs> when you're talking about regular trusts, I don't have any issue with a family member serving as trustee. When you're talking about special needs trusts, you have to really be careful. Sure. I prefer a professional, whether it's in a pooled trust or a professional trustee, mm -hmm. because you have somebody who knows what can, how right. the money can and cannot be spent. So, you know, I had one situation where the disabled person, even though he could not drive, wanted a flashy red sports car <laughs> and kept pressuring the trustee. Don't we all? Don't I, mean, we all? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I, I'm a van person. Okay, with all right. A flashy red I, van. <laughs> flashy red van. But, um, you know, it's really difficult for a family member to say no. Ah. Whereas a professional trustee can. It's easy. I mean, you're, you're disconnected in a sense because you're a yeah. professional and you know. Well, this is you going have, to hurt and the you. thing that a lot of people really, I think the viewers need to know is that when somebody is a professional trustee, they have responsibilities and they are accountable. And a lot of it is they have liability. Exactly. If they don't do what that trust says, then they can be held liable either potential fines or penalties or, or be sued and or their professional licenses. There's a lot on the line and st at stake mm -hmm. for them to do it correctly. Right. And so I highly recommend, when you're talking a special needs trust, I highly recommend that you have somebody. Mm. Um, I, have, I, I have created some special needs trusts where a professional guardian is the trustee of mm. the trust. Um, so, you know, that um, I don't have a problem with because the professional guardian has training mm -hmm. and knows. But to have a family member be the trustee, it, it can be dangerous. And what happens is if you lose those SSI benefits, you don't get them back until the money is gone. Wow. So it really defeats the purpose right. of having created or provided those funds. It really defeats the purpose. So well, and that makes it important. another important argument, Wendy. This is not do it yourself. No. This is not get the form from the office supply store off the shelf no. or fill it in. And I even, you know, I may get some 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 uh, grief for this, but I'm not a big fan of the you know trying to do it on the computer. You know. I've worked with you, and I know how much you know, or I, I think I know uh, some of what you know, but there's so much to this that you're going to be able, as a professional attorney, work with your client and bring things to light that we may not even thought of. Right, and, and I don't know that you could actually even find a special needs trust at, at one of these stores where they sell regular documents okay. because it is very specialized, and, and that area is changing. There's always changes. You have to keep up with it. 
or you are at risk of losing some and of each, benefits. And each state has some of their own laws exactly. and statutes related to this, in addition to what's at the federal level. Right, so how they implement the laws at the federal level differs. But, um, you know, again, if you're wanting to create a, a special needs trust, now the nice thing mm -hmm. about a third-party special needs trust is it can be revocable. So okay. the settler can make changes to that if it's part of their estate planning. Okay. So it's a, a trust within a trust. Okay. They can make changes to that, but a first party um, special needs trust is Can't irrevocable. Be. You cannot make changes to it because the whole purpose is to keep that money right. for the benefit of the person and not have somebody taking it out and spending it on other Well, things. there's a lot to this, Wendy. I'm, I'm glad we could share with the, the viewers a little bit just to give them a, a taste mm -hmm. of some of this. The key thing, takeaway is it is special, no pun intended, <laughs> and you better get special <laughs> advice and you better work with somebody that knows this, And uh, but it can be a great tool. So I'm so glad it you is. could be with, with us to talk about it. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Wendy Marr, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com. <laughs>